Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and in today's video essay, we shall be returning to my home state of Mississippi to discuss an underappreciated but noteworthy part of the state's natural fauna, that being the Opilianes, better known as the Harvestmen, or informally, Daddy Long Legs. You're my friend now. But what exactly is a harvest man or daddy longlegs? Well, sadly, the term daddy longlegs has been used for several unrelated organisms, including an orchard from Mexico, another orchard from Eastern Australia, an unrelated trigger plant from Western Australia, crane flies, cellar spiders, and of course, the subject of this video, harvest men, which due to the confusion that the term creates, most scientists prefer to call them harvestmen. But that just leads us to the next question is, what is a harvestman, you may ask? But to answer that question, we have to go further back than the group itself. Firstly, there are arthropods, which are a group of animals characterized by an exoskeleton and jointed legs. This group is divided into five main subcategories. There is the extinct but very diverse trilobites that dominated the Paleozoic seas, the crustaceans that include such well-known animals animals as lobsters, shrimp, and crabs. There are the myriapods, which include millipedes, centipedes, and their living kin. Then there are the hexapoda, that includes insects and their closest relatives. And finally, relevant to this video, there is the Cilicerata, which includes the mysterious sea spiders, horseshoe crabs, and the arachnids. It is within the arachnids that we see many well-known animals, including spiders, scorpions, ticks, mites, whip scorpions, tailless whip scorpions, and of course, the well-known harvestmen referred to as opilianes in this context. Harvestmen are distinguished from their close relatives by their ability to consume solid food, as opposed to only liquid food as in other groups of arachnids, and have seen their heads and bodies fuse into a single oval structure, as well as their very long legs. But now let us discuss the diversity of that group. Harvest men are themselves divided into five suborders. The extinct Tetrophilami, which are noted for their weird eye arrangement, but are otherwise not relevant to this video given that they are extinct. Among the living suborders, the most basal is the Cryptothalmi, also called the Mite Harvestmen, which are unique for their small size and general mite like appearance and have a very weird disjunct distribution, being found in places as far apart as the Pacific Northwest and New Zealand. They are very interesting, but are, alas, not found in the Magnolia State. The second suborder is Dipsonoi, also called the Ornate Harvestmen, which are named for their rather elaborate pedipalps that males possess. And they're really cool and are quite diverse in the Pacific Northwest, but they are sadly not found here. However, it is with the other two that we see the group represented in the state. So let's start with the first one. <laughs> The 
The Lanators, better known as the Armored Harvestmen, are the largest of the suborders at over 4,000 described species divided between seven superfamilies, including the Travulicidae, the Trivia Anachiridae, the Idanoidae, the Phalangodoidae, Samuridae, Zalmoraxidae, Gormitoroxidae, of which the last one is relevant here as it contains a species found in the state. The Gonoleptids are the most diverse superfamily with over 2,500 species divided into 10 families, of which the one found here belongs to the Cosmetidae, which is one of the largest families with over 700 species found throughout Central and South America. Overall, these animals are typically heavily plated, rather bulky for harvest men, and compared to their relatives, relatively short-legged. As diverse as they may be, however, only one species is known from the state, Vorones sei, sometimes referred to by the name the American Ornate Harvestman. Despite the lack of diversity, this species is actually rather interesting in several ways. First, it represents a rather recent arrival, given that the Laniators evolved in what was Gondwana, meant that they didn't arrive in North America until the creation of the Central American Land Bridge, meaning that the low diversity is actually somewhat realistic. The species is rather small, at one-fourth of an inch long, and is usually found beneath logs, loose rocks, and loose bark in wooden areas. Despite arriving recently, it's found across the entire state, and as far away as Nuevo Leon, Mexico, Cuba, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Tennessee, and Texas! Yeehaw! This species has, true to its classification, has a rather robust armored body that is usually rusty brown, but far more noteworthy is it has a Y-shaped white slash light tan stripe, which, when exposed to dark light, can fluoresce in a neat color, though sadly some individuals lack this. Overall, it's a cool creature, and definitely stands out compared to the other harvestmen of the state. But now let's talk about the second suborder, and the one that contains all the other species found in the wonderful Magnolia State. The Eupnoi, more often referred to as common or standard harvestmen, are far less diverse, containing 1,700 species divided into two superfamilies, the Cadioidea and the one found in the state, the Phalangioidea. As a whole, the Eupnoi are probably the most standard of all the harvestmen and represent what one thinks of when they think of the group at all, with most having rather long legs. They also evolved in the supercontinent of Laurasia, which makes up the modern-day North America and Eurasia, and are, in a way, the opposite of the Lanitories, being native to this area and later spreading into South America via the land bridge in Central America. Luckily, unlike the megafauna, it seems these two groups are relatively good at coexisting. The Phalangioidea are divided into four families, of which two are represented in the state. First, there is the introduced Phalangidae, which are a medium-sized family of about 381 species, which are otherwise known only from Eurasia, but have unfortunately been introduced to North Africa and North America. The species found here is the noted Phalangium opilio, also called the European Harvestman, and due to trade is found across the United States of America, except Texas and Hawaii. In regards to Mississippi, they are only known from Hines County, specifically Jackson, Mississippi, which makes sense given that they are found very abundantly in disturbed habitats, such as hedgerows, gardens, lawns, and underneath bridges. 
They are honestly a rather standard harvest men at about two and one fourth inches, and have a somewhat mixed reception among biologists. On one hand, they assist farmers by consuming the eggs of corn earworms, which are a terrible pest of various crops. On the other hand, it is believed that they displace some of the native species to a somewhat limited extent, so eh. Speaking of this species, they can be distinguished from the native ones by a light grayish coloration and two pale denticles below the anterior margin of the carapace, which is the body area. The males also have one pair of long, forward-pointing horns on the second segment of the salicerates, but because this is gender-dependent, it's not really all that reliable. All of the remaining species lack these and are part of the second family, the Scalerosomatidae, which is the largest family of the sob order, with about 1,300 species and are divided into five subfamilies, of which only one is found in the state, the Leobuninae. This subfamily is itself divided into 14 living genera. Of these, three are found in the state, two native and one introduced. Let us start with the introduced species and then cover the native ones. Lorinicus pacificus, also known as the Pacific Harvestman or the Californian Harvestman, true to his name, is native to the west coast from Alaska to southern California, and only as far as inland as Arizona. It has, however, thanks to trade, been introduced to several areas in the Gulf Coast. Unlike most species of harvestmen, it is adapted to dry desert habitats and is thus limited far more than the previous invasive species I've discussed and is only known from a few records in Hines County and seems like much less of a threat than the European one. It can be distinguished from native species by a carapace that is in general dirty white to gray with a black stripe down the middle, brown legs and two diverging white lines running from the eye tubercle, which is the location of the eyes in harvest mint. Now let's begin covering the truly native genera. First one only has one species found in the state, Eumizoma roeri, found in the southeast corner of the state, up as far north as Jackson, and into Louisiana, Texas, and the northern border of Mexico. It prefers to inhabit more open regions, such as fields and grasslands, particularly under isolated logs and other debris. It is a relatively small species at about a 27th of an inch in total size and somewhat cryptic with its dark gray to black coloration. But what I found the most interesting is that this genus, in many ways, has actually converged on the basic body plan of Laniators with its shorter, stouter legs and heavier armored body. It's rather interesting in that the level of convergent evolution here, and yet how they're still able to coexist. It's very fascinating, really. With the second genus, however, we see all the remaining species found within the Magnolia state, that being Leo Bunam. Leo Bunam, as a genus, has more than 100 described species and are perhaps the most standard of all harvestmen, which is saying a lot given that it is a part of a standard group of harvestmen. Aside from a particularly noxious invasive species in the Netherlands, the genus is largely unimportant to us humans. But now, let us cover them, starting with the most well-known species, Leobunum vitatum, also known as the Eastern Harvestman, or the Striped Harvestman. This species is recorded from across the state, and true to its name, is distinguished by a prominent dark stripe on the back, especially compared to the other native species, and is regularly found in a wide variety of habitats, including forests, woodlots, hedgerows, city parks, and backyards. In fact, you've probably seen one if you live here. The next species, Leobunum flavum, is known mostly in central Mississippi, but with scattered reports outside of this area. The species is a uniform light brown coloration and lack a backstripe, and is generally found in wooded areas, especially on tree trunks. 
The next species, Leobunum politum, is known only from three counties along the coast and is characterized by a reddish-brown coloration, but can only be effectively distinguished by the male's reproductive structure from the other species in the state, and he probably won't be able to tell that in the field, so, yeah. The next species, Leobunum uxorium, is only known from the eastern border of Mississippi along the edge of Alabama. It is found on the leaves of bushes and small trees, particularly at the margins of wooded areas. The males are rather similar to other species, while the females have a dark central spot overlaying a body with flecks of yellow arranged in several rows, set upon a light brown background. Both sexes have a venter surface, which is the belly area, that is white. The last species in the state is Leobunum ventricosum, only known from a single county, that being Octibeha County. It is distinguished by their eye tubercle being black, golden brown legs, and especially in males, the body is more pointed than in other species. It is found on the leaves of shrubs and trees in a mesic woodland. Now, this video may seem a bit random, but this was actually a script that I've seen lying around in my room for about a year now, and... My new schedule gave me a chance to rework this into a video essay, and I frankly think I'm doing a much better job waiting until now because, let's be honest, some of my really old content, which was unscripted, wasn't all that good. And some will say, you know, why'd you make a video about this? And, you know, to that, I agree. It is a bit random, but I think that they are a remarkable group. And that it shows the diversity of life that one can see just by going into your backyard.